So now it's time for us to take a little bit more of a detailed look at um, the weather that you get as a depression passes over. And notice here we've got to describe the weather, what's happening, and we've also got to explain the weather, why is it happening. And you'll see down here at the side that I've put the first couple in there for temperature and air masses, and the explanation is uh, contained in there as well, what is happening and why is it happening. Now before we fill any of that in, what I want to do is to fill in again some of the information here, uh, or the annotation here, onto the diagram, just so that you can get this well locked into your head with this. Um, so, in fact, let's not do it that way. Let me start off by drawing in the clouds. So like that. We have our massive cumulonimbus cloud at the cold front. Imbostratus there, and then the cirrus there. And then you have your cumulus clouds here and um, we mark on the precipitation and uh, you get rain here but let me see if I can make that pen a little bit thinner get rain here for this drizzle heavy rain and then heavy showers with these ones and then the last thing we're going to do is to kind of mark on the um, air masses as well. We'll do this adding colour because I really think the colour with this can just help really reinforce for you where you get these different air masses. Uh, and you can get it done visually like this. It kind of helps get that pattern locked well into your head. So we've got obviously our PM air there and there. And in the warm sector in between. We have got our TM air. You can shade it in more neatly than that, but that's just a bit of an indication for you of those. So that pattern really needs to be well locked into your head. Take a few moments now to add that on to your diagram. Okay, now remember, a depression approaches from the west, so the first part of the depression of the experience is the east or the right hand side of it. Uh, so we start here as there's number one for us to start at this one. The approach of the warm front, the temperature here is cool. The air mass that explains that is your PM air mass. As the warm front passes over, you get the sharp rise in temperature. Uh, and then the temperature here we would describe as mild. And your air mass that explains that is your TM air mass. And then finally, behind the cold front, where you've got your PM air, again, the temperature drops down now to being cold. Now, if you need to explain more about why that is the case, then you can talk uh, from your previous notes on the change in air masses. For example, the TM air mass comes from the tropics, from a warm region of the world, and it brings that milder, warmer air further north. The PM air mass originates in the poles, a cold region of the world, and it brings that colder air further south. So the second aspect of the weather that we're going to be taking a look at is cloud cover and precipitation. Now we can do those together because the explanation covers both of those. And again, we start over here at the right hand side, the approach of the warm front. First thing that you get, let me make my pen a little bit smaller here, I think, is the cirrus cloud. Then as the warm front passes over, you get Limbo stratus. Then in the warm sector you get little or none, maybe a little bit of little or none. Maybe a little bit of stratus, but very often you get none. And then the passing of the cold front you get your Jumulo Nimbus all one word struggling to fit this in, but you can write that in, in all one word, cumulonimbus, and then after the cold front you get your 
cumulus clouds. Um, so as the warm front begins to approach, you begin to get some drizzle as doesn't look much like a dew there. Let's try it again. You get some drizzle as it begins to approach. Then the warm front itself, rain. Then you get here again little or none, maybe a bit of drizzle, that's it. Cumulonimbus you get heavy rain. And then here at behind the cold front you get sunshine and showers. So what you see from this very clearly is that the cloud cover and precipitation, generally speaking, happens at the fronts. Uh, you'll have seen that in the previous videos, why that is. Let's have a look in a little bit more detail. The warm front, the TMR, rises over the PMR. With the cold front, the PMR undercuts the TMR, causing it to rise. In both cases then, as it rises, it cools and condenses, and then that forms clouds and precipitation. Next up we'll take a look at wind direction and wind speed. Again starting over here at number one. So the approach uh, of the warm front, the uh, wind direction, the air is coming from the southwest. Then in the warm sector, it swings round to come from the west. And after the cold front, it swings around to come from the northwest. Now, the reason for these, this is related and explained in reference to the anti-clockwise circulation of air around the center of low pressure. In other words, there's your anti-clockwise circulation of air initially coming from the southwest, then from the west, then from the northwest. Wind speeds. Um, you get a slow increase, then the winds are stronger at the front, decreasing slightly, strong and gusty, and a slow decrease here. Now, the reason for this is because wind speeds are generally strongest at the fronts, because there, whenever condensation is occurring, energy is being released whenever condensation occurs uh, at those places when you get the energy being released, that's when the winds are strongest. The last aspect of the weather we need to take a look at the changes as the depression goes over is the pressure itself. Now, a depression is a low pressure system which means that in the center of the depression, the pressure is lowest. Remember, pressure is the weight of the air. Um, and as you move away from the center of the depression, the pressure gets higher. As you move away from the center, the depression gets higher. Now remember, the depression move is, moves overhead. So let's imagine this as you standing here. As the depression begins to move overhead, you start off at a thousand millibars, but as you get closer to the center, you'll notice that the depression um, brings you lower pressure, get closer to this, 980. And then as the depression moves away, the pressure is going to increase again. So that brings us to the text. Right, pen back up here. So you get that steady fall, fall ceases, and it's steady but lower, then it rises and it rises slowly as we've just seen as you move over because the pressure is lowest at the center. And the depression or the pressure initially falls as the depression approaches and the low pressure gets um, closer. Then as the depression passes and moves away, the pressure slowly rises again as the center of low pressure gets further away. Let me just show you this again. This is definitely one of those things where it would be worthwhile you can pausing and replaying this video to put the video to get in your head. Here we go. As it approaches, initially you get the fall in the pressure. 
Then as it passes, you get the rise in the pressure. And the pressure you experience is depending on how close you are to the center of the depression. 